Time Warner Cable is pleased to be an underwriting sponsor for Carolina Week. Coming up on the February 16th edition of Carolina Week. I'm Eddie Sykes. I'll bring you the very latest about our student body presidential election results. We'll give you a first-hand account of what it was like in Egypt during the turmoil. In sports, the men's basketball team picks up an easy win, and we introduce you to the greatest Tar Heel fan. Weathercaster Patrick DeVore will tell us if these spring-like temperatures will last through the weekend. All that and physical and emotional medicine for kids you can't find in a doctor's office. Carolina Week starts right now. From the James F. Goodman Studio in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, connecting campus and community, this is Carolina Week. Week after the vote, and we're still waiting for the results of the student body president election. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Spearman. And I'm Andrea Lutka. Thank you for joining us. The student government elections are marked by suits and countersuits, charges and countercharges, and votes cast and counted but not announced. Eddie Sykes has been following it all, trying to make sense of a very strange set of circumstances. He joins us live in the studio. So, Eddie, when will we finally know who the next SBP is? That is the big question, Andrea. After a student Supreme Court pretrial hearing last night between the Board of Elections and the former Speaker of Student Congress, the best we can say is we should know by the end of the week. Students and campaign representatives, including SBP candidates Mary Cooper and Ian Lee, met for a pretrial hearing inside the UNC Law School last night, eager to see the results of the most recent chapter of this year's ongoing election controversy. Chief Justice Jessica Womack announced at the conclusion of the hearing that she'd render a decision within 48 hours to determine whether or not former student Congress Speaker Deanna Santoro has the necessary grounds to sue Board of Elections Chair Andrew Phillips. Depending on how Justice Womack rules, there could be even more delays. Eddie, when you say more delays, what do you mean exactly? Oh, uh, Andrea, here's what could happen. If there's a trial and Santoro does actually win her suit, the board would have to rule on and interpret another conflicting section of election laws. That could prevent Ian Lee from serving as student body secretary while running his campaign. Now, if Justice Womack throws out the case, the Board of Elections could make its announcements as soon as possible. Now everyone involved would just like to see some sort of resolution so we can move forward from this controversial season. I'm honestly just asking for a ruling to be made when I've been ignored for the past couple of weeks by the Board of Elections. Uh, I've compared it a little bit to uh, Florida in the year 2000. Uh, thank goodness we don't have any hanging chat. It's kind of a frustrating position because you're stuck between not knowing what to do and not being able to plan ahead. You can imagine the frustration of everyone involved and the student body as a whole is extremely eager to find out the results. Eddie, when's the earliest we can expect those results? Well, as I mentioned, Justice Womack will announce her decision sometime tonight or tomorrow. But whatever happens, with four strong candidates on the ballot, it's extremely likely that there will be a runoff election sometime in the near future. All right, that's Eddie Sykes starting us off live in the studio. Thanks, Eddie. The School of Nursing will cut undergraduate enrollment by 25 percent, one more consequence of state budget cuts. The reduction will start with summer semester admission on May 9th. The demand for nurses is on the rise because of health care reform and aging baby boomers, but the university's budget cuts leave nursing school officials no choice. They say the school must maintain education quality and believe cutting enrollment is the only option. Budget cuts are forcing two departments to take extreme measures in order to stay at UNC. The Slavic and Germanic languages and literatures departments have decided to merge because of budget cuts and low graduation numbers. This has no direct effect on current students and the courses they're able to choose from. The only difference will be the title of the degrees graduates receive. Chairman of Germanic Languages and Literatures Clayton Kelb says some programs are worth preserving, even if enrollment is low. We're not selling cars here. We're, we're providing education and we're, we're both preserving and increasing knowledge. Now Kelb says he's optimistic about the merge, but real changes won't come until after the departments meet in July. Even in this budget cut climate, UNC Chapel Hill is making sure professors are getting the salaries they deserve. It's been nine years since UNC's last study of faculty salary equity, and administrators agree it's time to take another look. The new survey will examine even more factors of salary disparity, such as the time it takes to reach promotion and the quality of startup packages for new faculty. This improved study will focus on better tracking of annual salary disparities. 
and Governor Bev Perdue plans to focus more on education this year, and that was the theme of her State of the State address. But the governor didn't mention UNC system budget concerns. In her State of the State address Monday, Perdue focused on secondary education, not higher ed. She outlined several key in items, including her college or career program, which would give high school students who meet certain criteria two free years of college. She also pledged to keep all current public school teachers and teaching assistants. Awards and recognition are nothing new to the town of Chapel Hill, and tonight the town hopes to be recognized yet again, this time as a destination of distinction. The judges from the National Trust for Historic Preservation selected Chapel Hill for the competition because of its beauty and commitment to preserve historic sites. The UNC Cemetery and the Carolina Inn were two of Chapel Hill's landmarks that made the town stand out. If you want to support Chapel Hill, you can log on and vote through a link on our website, carolinaweek.org. Your address might soon be changing even if you aren't planning to move. Orange County is drafting an ordinance to change non-sequential numbering at some addresses. Officials are also looking to correct other issues, such as missing street signs, unlabeled mailboxes, and private drives that don't have names assigned. The county estimates as much as 15 percent of the county could be affected by the ordinance. Anti-government protests continue in countries throughout the Middle East, often fueled by social media and spurred by the success of protests in Egypt. Jennifer Kessinger joins us live in the studio. Jennifer, the protesters, the protesters in Egypt got what they wanted, but it was a scary time for anyone who was there. Jeremy, that's right. That includes a UNC student who's happy to be home after an abbreviated stay in Egypt. When junior Virginia Sparks signed up to study abroad in Egypt this semester, she didn't know she'd be there for less than a week. The UNC study abroad program brought I didn't really think that it was as big a deal as it was about to be. Um, so I wasn't really worried. I felt really safe the whole time I was with a lot of other students. But eventually she didn't feel safe as the protests intensified. Everybody started screaming, so we locked our doors and moved the furniture in front of the door, and it was one of the scariest moments of my life because I thought that we were being attacked by looters or something. Sparks and another UNC student made it home safely, but the situation in Egypt remains volatile. President Mubarak resigned last week, but the country's future remains uncertain. Chapel Hill residents held a forum to discuss the impact of the protests in the United States. At the forum, political analysts showed Facebook photos of the protests in Egypt and answered questions from the audience. But Sparks didn't need to see the Facebook pictures. She witnessed Egypt firsthand during a trying and uncertain time. She remembers having to share international calling cards with 300 other students just so she could talk to her family. We had one minute to call home and tell our mom that we were safe and everything was okay. And that was a really emotional moment for me because I didn't know when the next minute would be that I could talk to my family again. Sparks is waiting, along with the rest of the world, to see if the new government can stabilize Egypt and help ease fears throughout the region. Sparks actually wants to return to Egypt as soon as it seems safe enough for her to go back. That's definitely an interesting story, Jennifer, but there's a new government and still lots of questions. And that's not only in Egypt, Jeremy, but throughout the region. Study abroad officials will probably think long and hard before allowing any Carolina students to go back to any of the hotspots. Right, and we'll definitely keep you updated on the situation in the Middle East. That's Jennifer Kessinger live in our studio. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Well, Jeremy, we all know that feeling of fatigue that comes with late nights in the library and 8 a.m. classes, right? Yeah, but did you know your caffeine pick-me-up might have greater negative effects on you than you think? Coming up, more on caffeine and your health. Hey, Sarah. Oh, my gosh, she's so cute. How do you know Cap? Come on, Donovan, do it like I taught you. Love the new tattoo, Sarah. Let's go! Dude, what? Dude, that's Sarah. That's the girl in the pink shirt, that's the girl I was telling you about. Oh, that's Sarah? Theater two on your left. Hey, Sarah. What color underwear today? Hey, Sarah, so when are you going to post something new? Anything you post online, anyone can see. Family, 
friends. See you later, Sarah. Even not so friendly people. Think before you post. My name's Brandon. I'm nine years old being alcoholic. Hi, Brandon. I'll start drinking with the older kids. And whatever they do, I'll do. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. I know I'll start with alcohol. I'm just not sure how it's gonna end. Welcome back to Carolina Week. Many college students rely on a shot of caffeine to get through the day, but is that a good idea? Health reporter Kelly Isler tells us what caffeine can do to our bodies. A cup of coffee to start the day, a soda for an afternoon pick-me-up, an energy drink to pull an all-nighter. It's a familiar routine for many students, such as UNC junior Cameron Nadler. With a dramatic arts major, I have a lot of late nights with rehearsals. So to balance the schoolwork, I have to stay up late a lot of the time, and um, I usually drink energy drinks to help me do that. Dr. Alan Obar at UNC Campus Health says caffeine blocks signals in our brains that are telling us to take a break. The nerves continue to fire and you can continue to function despite the fact that your body's telling you to stop and rest. If we use caffeine to ignore our body's needs, there can be some bad side effects. I start getting a headache and I start like shaking a bit every now and again. Registered dietitian Antonia Hartley says too much caffeine can mimic the signs of stress. The symptoms of excessive caffeine intake include elevated heart rate, elevated blood pressure. It can also lead to GI distress like diarrhea. And if you sort of think about what those symptoms are, they're also symptoms of stress. Besides causing these effects, caffeine is addictive. The caffeine that had a really profound effect the first time, a really good effect the first time, is now having less of an effect, which makes the individual want to drink more caffeine. Here are a few tips to avoid these effects and stay awake without using caffeine. Exercise. Eat small meals throughout the day to keep your blood sugar stable, and eat foods that are high in protein like eggs, nuts, and seeds. These foods will boost your energy and keep you alert. In Chapel Hill, I'm Kelly Izzer for Carolina Week. Well, if you're anxious or having trouble sleeping, caffeine could be the cause. Contact the Counseling and Wellness Center at Campus Health Services to find out how caffeine is affecting you. A new addition to the Paul Green Theater complements the themes in the drama Angels in America, an award-winning play about AIDS in America. More than 91,000 people are honored in the AIDS Memorial Quilt. Four sections of the quilt will hang in the Paul Green Theater through March 6th. Friends, family, and supporters each created, each created a panel of the quilt in memory of someone who died from AIDS. The Names Project Foundation maintains the quilt. Each panel measures three by six feet, symbolizing the size of a human grave. And it's some bad news for those fashion addicts out there. The days of falling clothing prices may be coming to an end. Clothing prices are expected to rise about 10% in coming months. The biggest increase is coming in the second half of the year. During the recession, retailers helped cut costs by blending fabric materials. But now that the economy is back on the rise and consumer good demand is increasing, the price of clothing is expected to go up. Weathercaster Patrick DeVore joins us live here in the studio. Right, Patrick. It's been an amazing streak of four days. Now, is winter over or is it just teasing us a little bit? Well, we are expecting some cold temperatures to return overnight, but as you take a look outside today, it's been, it's been a nice day and that will continue throughout the weekend. I'll tell you more when we come back. Hey. Ready to go? Yeah, but the fire's not out. Close enough. Huh. Close enough? If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. I mean, the next thing you know, you've torched our whole neighborhood. Which is why we're not going anywhere? Exactly. Nine out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. There's a lot of talk out on the street about his mother, your mother their mother.
happen in the end? Is anyone really even thinking about them? In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the US Open twice, one in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Welcome back to Carolina Week. I'm forecaster Patrick DeVore. Well, our, ro our weather is going to be taking a roller coaster this weekend, but we could possibly be seeing some 80 degree temperatures tomorrow on Friday. But the t bad thing is that means our drought continues. I'll get to tell you more about that coming up. Taking a look at our satellite picture, you can see that there's just been some few high clouds that have been uh, throughout North Carolina. There's this massive bank off to the south and east, but that's not going to be moving our way, which is good news for those of you who like to be outside, especially at this early point in uh, with our taste of spring that we've been experiencing. Our service map, you can see that the reason, unseasonably high temperatures we've been seeing is due to this high pressure system that's sitting off of our coast. And uh, today, it's been off to our east, which is helping to bring in some warm southwest, uh, southeasterly winds into our area, which has helped to keep us dry and warm, which has been really nice if you've been able to get outside. Tomorrow, that high pressure system moves a little bit further off the coast, which will help uh, bring in some more clouds from this low pressure system that's going to be moving its way to this, towards the east, which could possibly bring us some uh, more clouds on Thursday. And uh, this rain chance that you see off, that unfortunately is not going to get, make its way to us because it's just going to dry, uh, move across the mountains and dry out, which just means that we'll see some clouds from it, but nothing more. However, if you take a look off to the west, you can see there's this massive area of snow and rain that's beginning to move uh, off the Pacific, and that's going to bring some wet weather to the West Coast, which is what they don't need at this time of year. If you plan on heading out to the baseball uh, season opener in LA instead, uh, you might want to reconsider with our temperatures, with temperatures out there going to be in the uh, upper 50s and lower 60s, and they're expecting rain on Friday and Saturday, which could possibly uh, rain out, wash out the games. However, if you plan on stay here instead and go to the basketball game against Boston College, tip off around 4 o'clock. We're expecting some partly cloudy skies with 64 degree temperatures. And after the game, uh, 58 degrees under some cloudier skies. But it should be a great day all around. Our drought update that just came out uh, yesterday, the entire viewing area is still under a moderate to severe drought with the, moderate, with the severe conditions stretching through the center of the state. Uh, for the past 90 days, we're under not, four and a half inches of rain from where we should be, which is really helping to cause these warmer temperatures, but also hurting our, uh, hurting our, our water tables, which is going to not end well. But tonight, you can expect 40 degrees, scattered clouds, calm winds. It'll be a nice night. Make sure you get outside and enjoy the stars. Tomorrow, we're going to start out mostly sunny, but it is going to uh, become mostly cloudy by the evening, high of 66. And for our seven day, you can, or five day, you can see that we're going to be in the upper 60s to mid 70s on Friday. We could possibly get up to 80, depending on how, mon how much clouds we see. Our lows do bounce around a little bit. We could get down to freezing on Saturday night. So just make sure you bundle up if you plan on heading out after the basketball game and enjoy the, the weekend's weather. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. All right, Patrick, we're all happy to hear about the warmer temperatures, but what about that drought? We can be concerned about that at all? We, stood we should start getting concerned, however, um, we possibly could be seeing some rain from that system out west come this way uh, next Friday or so. All right. So just we'll keep an eye on it and let you know. All right. Thanks, Patrick. Well, this warm weather has many of us thinking about spring, and for seniors, that means graduation. This year's graduates will sport a more true blue graduation robe. In semesters past, as you see here, Carolina's robes were more of an aqua color than the traditional Carolina blue. Chapel Hill's very own Alexander Julian designed the new robes, and after many dye tests, the robes seem to be the perfect shade. They're also eco-friendly and made from recycled materials. The new robes will debut about a month from now. And sportscaster Andy Reeves joins us in the studio. That's right, Andy, and another basketball tournament tipping off about a month from now, and it looks like the Heels, knock on wood, might actually be there this year. That's absolutely right, Jeremy. The Heels have won seven of their past eight games and are looking really good at second place in the ACC. Coming up after the break, we'll show you how the men's basketball team continues to roll.
you ever considered, I don't know, getting it waxed? Waxed? Yeah. Bro, that's a little weird. I don't know. Doesn't seem that weird to me. Just keep shaving my back, okay? Oh, dude, can I get a bite? What? With my spoon? It's disgusting. This log. Yeah. Whoa! I like the black ones. I like the brown wiggly ones. Mmm. I like the green crunchy ones myself. Whoa. Get out and explore nature. There's surprises everywhere. Go to discovertheforest.org. <clears throat> Anyone up for dessert? The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. Welcome to Carolina Week Sports. I'm Andy Reeves. The men's basketball team is preparing for Boston College after taking care of business against a struggling Wake Forest club that's last in the ACC. The heels never trailed in this one, John Henson with the acrobatic move right there. He had his fourth straight double-double with 14 points and 13 rebounds. Leslie McDonald also gave the heels a big lift with 13 points off the bench. Coach Roy Williams was staying serious throughout, but his team was having way too much fun. Harrison Barnes must have liked the ESPN top 10 love he got from his dunk against Clemson because he went off last night. Barnes flushed dunk after dunk on his way to 17 points in a 78-64 UNC win. And now we know one of Tar Heel who was at the game last night. Rachel Nash has more about one fan who's been cheering on the Tar Heels since 1973. Rhoda Osterneck has a smile that's been lighting up Carolina basketball games for 38 years. After all, it's her job to get the risers raging. And she says she owes it all to her husband, Bob, who inspired her love for the Tar Heels. I loved sports. I never could have married him if I didn't like sports. And so when I came down here, I just became a Tar Heel. Bob chose to cheer for UNC for a very important reason. So he went to Duke State, Wake, and Carolina, and he felt that Carolina was the classiest school. But Rhoda isn't just a true blue in the Dean Dome. Her house is a shrine to all things Carolina. There are the Rams, the memorabilia, and she always makes sure to accessorize appropriately. And even from the street, you can tell this is Rhoda's house. Rhoda had it painted her favorite shade of blue. Back on the court, she says her favorite player of all time is undoubtedly his airness. Goes back to Michael Jordan. Jordan Michael Jordan, mostly for one reason. Well, winning the national championship. Rhoda says no matter what, she'll continue to attend UNC basketball games. She says she has unfinished business. Well, I want to win a couple more national championships. That's what I want. And here's to Rhoda getting exactly what she wants. In Chapel Hill, I'm Rachel Nash, Carolina Week Sports. Rhoda also contributes off the court. She provides scholarships for swimming, wrestling, and football. One member of the UNC men's lacrosse team is starting his career with a bang. Freshman midfielder Nicky Galasso was named ACC Player of the Week after, his only, only, after only his first game ever as a Tar Heel. Galasso scored four goals and recorded one assist in, his, in the Heels' 14-11 win against Robert Morris. Volley. That's a great find for Coach Joe Bresci. He was the top recruit in the country. Volleyball team is staying very busy during its offseason by doing some work in the community. This past Saturday, the UNC volleyball team spent its morning at Phoenix Place, building houses for the Habitat for Humanity's Build-A-Block program. Not quite the serving and blocking they're used to, they were cutting and hammering into the siding of this house to support the community that supports them so much. Sophomore, Sarah, sophomore setter Cora Harms says she learned a lot from building houses with the people who will live in them. 
just seeing them out here working, working beside them, shows me like how much they want it, how much they want to help. Um, and so it kind of just makes me appreciate what I'm given and also appreciate what I can give to them. And the volleyball team isn't the only team giving back. Crew, gymnastics, and other Olympic sports have gotten into the action. It might only be February, but we already know what's ahead for the football team this fall. The ACC released the UNC football team's schedule for the 2011 season. Notable games include a home game against Miami, a trip to Clemson, and a big Thursday night trip to Blacksburg to take on the conference champs Virginia Tech. And tonight, the wrestling team faces off against the Citadel at Carmichael as the Heels try to finish the season at 500. The men's basketball team tries to make it three in a row this weekend against Boston College. And the women's lacrosse team returns to Chapel Hill Sunday against Richmond. The gymnastics team will try to rebound from a two straight losses when the ladies take on Pittsburgh. So guys, a lot of athletic teams on the road this weekend, but thank goodness we do have that game against Boston College at home to look forward to on Saturday. Yeah, hopefully it's a little like the last big one against Boston College. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, thanks so much, Andy. And Jeremy, does it ever amaze you how the animals can have such a positive effect on people? Well, it's hard not to enjoy the presence of animals, Andrew. <laughs> Coming up, we'll visit a local riding center that offers a different type of medicine. If you have a story idea, call Carolina Week at 919-843-8292 or email us at carolinaweek at unc.edu. If you have questions about this program, write Carolina Week at Campus Box 3365, UNCCH, Chapel Hill, North Carolina 27599. Be sure to check out Carolina Week and Carolina Connection online at carolinaweek.org. My mama always said, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. Lions, tigers, bears, oh my. I could have been a contender. Then let me take a bite of Welcome back to Carolina Week. Now, some kids with autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, seek healing and strength with a different type of medicine, a type you can't find in a hospital or doctor's office. At the North Carolina Therapeutic Riding Center, kids can have fun riding horses while benefiting psychologically and physically. Lindsay Hawkins, Lindsay Hawkins tells us about the afternoon she spent at a riding class. Like any other six-year-old, she's like full of like energy it. and loves to tell people about her favorite yeah, things. Like Horses are my favorite animal. Like one out of every 110 children in the U.S., Catherine has autism. But unlike most of those children, Catherine often gets to be around her favorite animal. The instructors and therapists lead the kids in stretches, through obstacle courses, and even counting. The therapeutic riding is, is using the horse and the environment to help the child in any way, in, in all kinds of different motor skills. The center operates on 28 acres on Clearwind Farm in Mebbin. This is such an inclusive, amazing environment that uh, an individual can come here and, and feel ownership. And Catherine's dad saw her take ownership as she took hold of the reins. It wasn't just that they were sticking her on the horse and leading her around for a while, as it was she was actually controlling the horse, telling it when to turn, telling it when to stop, and that was really impressed me. And the horses here are perfect for the center because they're gentle with the kids and with me. <laughs> and there's no doubt that riding horses makes Catherine happy about life. In Mebbin, I'm Lindsay Hawkins, Carolina Week. You know, Jeremy, I've often heard that horses can have that effect on kids. It's really a joy to see that they can have such an effect on kids who need that help. Yeah, Andrew, it really is, Lindsay. You had a great story there. Well, that does it for this edition of Carolina Week. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have a good night.